In this video, I wanted to go over several things that you might want to consider if you are thinking of making a move to the upstate of South Carolina or even western North Carolina, Polk County, Rutherford County. These are the areas that my company services. My name is Leanne Carswell. I own the expert real estate team. We're in Greer, South Carolina. We're probably 20 minutes to the North Carolina border. Um, you go through Landrum, kind of horse country up through there. So in this video, I wanted to go over things that if you're considering moving to this area, things you might want to be asking before you make the move. I see questions that folks are asking on um, the Facebook pages about moving to South Carolina. People are always asking questions about car taxes and property taxes and things like that. But I wanted to show you a few things related to the real estate market when um, you're thinking of making this move. So before we get started, I wanted to point out a few things. Um, I put some chapters down below. And if you would, if you want to click on a specific thing, if you'd like to learn more about that, it'll take you there quickly so you don't have to listen to this whole video. Um, so I hope that helps. If you learn anything throughout this video, if you could give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe to our page because we would love to have you um, as someone in our community. We're always looking for that to grow. And then if you would like to set some time, put some time on the calendar to have a conversation or a discovery call with me or one of my agents, give us um, a click on the Calendly link and we'll get you in our calendar and start having um, some conversations with you to educate you about South Carolina. First thing I wanted to go over, well, let's talk about this. So there are four things that typically buyers ask. Um, they need to understand the market. Um, there are things that they need to consider um, before making a move, before purchasing. Um, three, we need to talk about viewing properties. And four, four, the offer process. So number one, understanding the market. I'm a map person, so anytime I want to learn about an area, I pick up the map. So we're going to do a little um, looking at the map here in just a minute, but you may want to consider what type of house that you um, want to be purchasing. Do you want new? Do you want resale? Do you want to build? Kind of what are you thinking? Right now, and I pulled these numbers up, in the Greenville MLS, there are 53, just over 5,300 um, active new construction, well, excuse me, active listings, 5,300 active listings. Of those, new construction is about 45%. So a lot of new construction going on in the upstate of South Carolina. Right now, new construction is making up about 30% of our, our market. So, a lot of choices when it comes to new construction. Um, then you'll need to decide if you want to be in a cookie cutter community where the lots are small in a neighborhood, if you will, um, or if you want to be out in the country um, it just depends on your lifestyle and what you see for you and your family. So that's one thing that you want to consider. Um, inventory, you'll want to consider the inventory at different price points. And in our seller's um, video, we talk about the months of inventory. Right now, the Greenville MLS, the Spartanburg MLS, kind of all across the upstate, we have a seller's market, a buyer's market, and a normal market. It all depends on what price point that you're looking in. Really under half a million dollars, it's mostly a seller's market. Um, over a million dollars, it's a buyer's market. And in the middle, more of a balanced market. 
but it's all it can all change and if we drill down into specific subdivisions for instance if I were to choose the cliffs of glassy it's kind of its own thing so we just have different absorption rates there so that's one thing that you'll want to know um, absorption rates in a second we're going to take a view or look at the maps and we'll talk about different counties and maybe you know different ways you want to search that way and areas that you want to consider um, other things you might want to know is what are the average price points in that area um, what is the days on market in that area so um, those are all good questions to consider when you are going to purchase a new property. All right, I wanted to start out for um, area search, what you would consider. I wanted to start out with this map because it helps break it down by the county. So Greenville County, the way the MLS is split up in Greenville County, each area has a number. So I don't know why it's... They're not on here, but each area has a number, and as you get in closer to downtown 71, that's where the hub of things are. Then Anderson County, Pickens County, Spartanburg County are all set up differently. One thing I wanted to point out is, for instance, Spartanburg County, the way it is split up as I move my cursor around, these are districts. So school district one, school district two, that's how they have their school districts split up. Pickens County, there's only four or five elementary schools in the whole um, county. Then Anderson County is split up into sections, if you will. So when you're deciding on where you might want to go, these are a few things to consider. So this is kind of a map of the whole area. So as you get into that Greenville downtown, obviously kind of things come together. Same thing for Spartanburg, all the roads come together. On the outskirts of all of both of these towns, it's pretty rural. Um, I mean, it's very common to see 5, 10, 20 acre tracks. And then when you get down below, same thing, um, you know, to see large tracks. So you'll need to decide what... Um, what you want to be near, is it near a certain school, is it near, you know, a certain, um, your job, so, you know, what's your drive time, so that's one thing that you'll want to consider when you are trying to decide where you want to be, about, um, what type of home you'd be looking for, so let's do that now. The second thing that you may want to be thinking about when you are going to buy a property, some things that you need to consider throughout the process. Um, get with a reputable realtor, someone who knows the market, who can help educate you. I would do an expectation check because um, we sometimes have buyers who come in and, and give us their huge wish list, but we're only able to check a few of those boxes. So sometimes there's going to need to be a resetting of expectations as and that's something within this market we've all got to do. So make sure, um, you know, you're setting those expectations. Make sure you go ahead and make that list of things that you just have got to have. You cannot live without. And, you know, hopefully we can find all the other things that you love in a property and it comes together and it's the perfect home for you and for your family. So when you're talking, if you have to get a mortgage, when you're talking about your mortgage payments, your mortgage payments made up of principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. But also things you may need to consider 
our HOA fees if you are living in a subdivision and you know you've got a, a nice pool that needs to be paid for neighborhood pool to pay for so those come with HOA fees make sure you're thinking of your um, property insurance so because that's another um, thing that gets wrapped into that as well as if you are getting a mortgage and putting less than 20 percent down you need to think about mortgage insurance which is basically insurance that you're paying for that protects the bank in case you default. So did you know you bought an insurance policy for that? Make sure you're thinking about the property taxes, and then when you get into the property, make sure you apply for the residential rate. Um, otherwise, the um, state will stick it to you and charge you way more than they should. So... Um, that's something that new homeowners need to make sure that they consider is getting from a 6% rate to a 4% rate. If you don't apply for it, they, they jack it to the 6% rate. And it's um, more than just the 2%. It's actually your taxes go up two and a half times what they normally would if it was your primary residence. Doesn't mean, that don't even, we're not even considering the... Um, Homestead taxes, um, you know, for you being older, if you're a veteran, there's some additional tax savings you can have there. Um, make sure you budget enough money for any upgrades. If you're buying a brand new house, you might want to put a mini blind in that house for your bathroom. So make sure you're setting some money aside for things like that because with any new property or new home, comes those things that you just have to have otherwise you're using a sheet and a couple of pins to um, cover your windows again work with an expert realtor work with an expert lender a great lender should be able to take your information and lay out all your options for you whether it's conventional or FHA or VA or USDA and tell you which is your best options um, and then what each of those mean and they all come with pluses and minuses so a good lender will sit down with you and explain all of that um, and help you know work work it into your budget so um figure out how you want to be represented so when you're working with that great realtor, normally they will help you decide how you want to be represented. Do you want to be a client of theirs or a customer of theirs? And they owe you different duties depending on what you choose. If you've bought a whole bunch of houses, you may not need as much representation as somebody buying their first home. So make sure you have that conversation with the, the agent that you're talking to because um, we've got some great realtors um, in the upstate and um, so just make sure you're getting a good one let's see other things oh your fears a good realtor is going to help manage your fears um, with things like well I need to sell to buy and I don't want to be homeless so that's always a, a big scare especially in this in this market um, and what type of negotiating do you want to do? And that's kind of jumping ahead from the, in the offer process, we'll talk about in number four, but that's a big thing right now. You need to have a plan of how you're going to negotiate properties. The first thing I'm going to tell you, number one, until you sign uh, an agency, Hopefully, the realtor will pull out an agency flyer because it's required by law. Um, and that flyer basically describes a single agent and a dual agent and what that means and, you know, which hat they're going to be wearing. Um, it explains the difference between a customer and a client. Um, so make sure you know who's representing you when you walk through the door if you meet the realtor for the first time at the door, that's okay. Um, as long as they pull out that uh, agency disclosure because it is the law and you can tell a great agent when they pull that agency disclosure out before they open the door and let you go in. So 
when you go in, first thing you need to do, keep your mouth shut. Pretend you are being videotaped because you could be. Um, I mean, I have, you know, videos in my house in case there were any burglars. Um, so lots of other people have video cameras in their homes. So you don't want to go in and say, oh my God, this place is gorgeous. You just gave away all of your negotiating power. You also don't want to go in and go, oh my God, this place stinks. So just pretend like you're being videotaped and uh, don't let, unless you just don't care. Now I've had some clients that just don't care um, and, you know, and they're fine with, you know, them saying somebody's house stinks and they want them to know. But if you don't want to give away any negotiating power, just, you know, keep a straight face. Have that conversation with the agent at the appropriate time. Um, but, you know, just don't go blurting stuff out because it could come back and bite you. Um, as you're viewing properties, rank them. You know, you'll look at the first one and you may go, eh, not really feeling it. You'll go to the second one and go, oh, I like this one better than the first one. So that one just came in number one. Go to the next one. Rank it against the other one. So, again, you're creating that hierarchy of which one you like. If there is something that, you know, you might not get everything you want. If you get 80% of what you want, I think that's a winner, something you might want to negotiate on. If it's 70% or under of what you're, what you're liking, I wouldn't necessarily make an offer on it. Um, there are things coming on the market daily. And your agent should have you on a list of a search for what you're looking for um, daily. My most successful buyer clients come in, sit down with me or someone from the team. They go through the computer together. It makes so much, it just jogs your memory when you sit down with the agent and they pull up a list of all the homes and they'll click on one and you go, Oh, I forgot to tell you, I don't want vinyl siding. So then you can add that back into your list. Oh, I forgot. I don't want two story. I've got bad knees. So those things help jog your memory. And when you see that picture of the home and you've already said no to it, then the agent can do some maneuvering and take the rest of those out and save everybody time. So it's always a good thing. If you can sit down and go through the MLS with the agent, just help save everybody so much time. So let's move on to the offer process. Number four, the offer process. This is a really big deal. Um, your best agents are picking up the phone, calling the other agent, the listing agent, and number one saying, do you have any offers? you need to know how fast or how slow you need to be moving um, so I definitely recommend if you are a realtor not doing that start doing that but pick up the phone and make sure that oh, just went under contract five minutes ago um, so make sure um, you're making that phone call or the agent that's working with you is making that phone call if you have a bucket full of cash and that's how you plan on paying for your home, that's wonderful. At the end of the day, the seller, I don't want to say the seller doesn't care because it comes to him in cash anyway, but just because you are paying all cash doesn't necessarily mean that just means the seller is just going to drop the price to whatever you want it to be. So even though you always hear cash is king, it's very important, but at the end of the day, the seller, it's all cash to the seller once it comes from the closing attorney. It just means that that's one less hurdle that you have to get through. Um, it's less risk for the seller, but, you know, cash offers back out just like, you know, offers with loans do. So it's, you're not totally, you know, golden when you say, well, I've got cash, I'm paying cash. The terms of the offer 
are very important. So again, another best practice that your agent should be doing is picking up the phone and asking the listing agent, what's the seller looking for? I mean, obviously price. Everybody wants price. But you know what? They might need to close in a week. Or they might need to close and rent back for a month or two. So it just make sure you're making that phone call because if you're dealing with an elderly seller that's got 50 years worth of stuff in that house and he needs some extra time, then that's a good thing to know as you head into it. Um, of course, always earnest money. You want to come in with a strong earnest money. And in South Carolina, we have a thing called due diligence. Basically, that's the time period, one, two, three weeks, when you have to look at the house, have your inspections, make sure you're not buying a lemon. Um, or if you are, in that due diligence period, you can ask the seller for repairs, a new roof, them to fix certain things, or money off, um, then there's another thing with due diligence that if you back out, we have what's called a termination fee. And I do primarily listings, but if I were to get somebody where the buyer, you know, wants three weeks to take a seller's property off the market and they weren't willing to give them any due diligence or termination fee money, that doesn't seem like a very strong offer to me. Whereas if it's a short window, a week, to do their inspections and they're willing to give them 500 or or 1000 that's more of a stronger offer, um, in my opinion. So, obviously, um, you know, we want to make the terms of the offer fit you as well, but we also have to make sure we're um, fitting the seller too. Um... Oh, the clue report. So your realtor should be, hopefully, have you working with an insurance person. If they don't, we can refer you to some. But when you're looking at a home, that a used home, 5, 10, 20 years old, they can have the insurance um, person that you're working with run a clue report. Basically, all the insurance companies, if there were to have been an insurance claim on that house, the clue report would tell them. And if the seller didn't disclose a flood, the clue report will tell them because if there was a flood, there was water, and where there's water, there's mold. That might be some things that you want to keep an eye on and keep a look at. Um, so, and then make sure, especially if you're coming from out of state, make sure you have your inspections. Um, inspections are huge. So, um septic tank inspections, um, our sewer inspections. They can do a sewer, sewer scope and run a camera in there and see if there's any problems with your sewer line. Anyway, make sure you listen to um, some of the advice that your realtor's given you and trust your gut. And if there's anything that we can do here at the Expert Real Estate Team, or again, click on that Calendly link below Set some time aside to have a conversation with us because we strive to make sure that anything you purchase with us, um, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but we're going to do our best to make sure at the end of the day you are tickled to death with it. And uh, we would love to see you at that closing table. Thanks so much.